Finally tonight, one of college basketball's most successful coaches on his almost 50-year career. I sat down with recently retired Duke coach Mike Krzyzewski, known to many fans as Coach K. Go right away! A college basketball legend has right hung up his ball. whistle. After you scream, come right to the ball. Duke okay, men's go. coach now Mike Krzyzewski retired this you season go. as the winningest coach of all time anything. after a 47-year career. When you're going, you take a quick look at him, and then if you don't get it, get, get back up there. He came from humble roots, raised in Chicago in a Polish-American Catholic family. His mother, Emily, encouraged him to attend West Point, where he was a standout basketball player under head coach Bobby Knight. He served in the Army before coaching his alma mater. From there, Krzyzewski went to Duke, where for 42 years he was a force in the college game. Coach K won five national championships with the Blue Devils and set the NCAA record for all-time wins. He also led the U.S. national basketball team, winning three Olympic gold medals. And at his side, his wife, Mickey, their three daughters and 10 grandchildren. It means I met Mike Krzyzewski in his office at Duke for an exclusive conversation about his life and legacy. Mike Krzyzewski, I try to be a fair reporter always, but I have to say being here at Duke, my alma mater, the chance to talk with you, it's a real treat. Thank you. Thank you. This is a big change right. for you. Coaching for, what, almost five decades. Has it sunk in yet? You know, it's seeping in, but in a good way. I've done what I wanted to do since I was 16. I wanted to be a coach. I've loved it. And... You know, in order to do something you love, sometimes you have to do things you don't like to get it done. You know, I think I would still like to coach, but I wasn't willing to put all the time and effort of all the recruiting and the rapidity of it got too much. I mean, 47 years is pretty good. Coach K's office is a museum of mementos from the Army. I did serve. I was never in combat. And uh, I was an artillery officer that's helmet. Could have used those for an away game. Uh. <laughs> there are keepsakes from those five national championships and the U.S. national team wins. People say, what's the greatest moment? It's that. Because, More than any Duke win. Well, yeah. and that's I mean, not to minimize not that. that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but this is the world. Photos this from fans. I, I have three groups of nuns around the United States <laughs> that I write to, and they pray for you. They say rosaries. It's and family man. photos. My brother, who passed, was a captain in the Chicago Fire Department. And my mom probably had the most influence of anyone in my life. And, of course, his wife, Mickey. Married 52 years. She's been in on all major right. decisions you've made in your life. Explain how that works. A lot of people say it's the coach, but it's the family that makes the sacrifice. And she's really talented. I was blessed to have her and my three daughters, and I learned, sometimes the hard way, the wisdom of a woman. And uh, the way that she looks at things, and my daughters do, that's helped me immensely grow uh, and, and change along, uh, along the years. I've heard it said that among your many qualities, Mike Krzyzewski can be stubborn. Yeah, I'm stubborn, but I, I'm, I'm also very flexible when I hear a better solution. It doesn't have to be my idea. In fact, in the mid-90s, I changed my leadership style a lot because I, I had been a, kind of a micromanager. Maybe I was too stubborn then, up until the mid-90s. But after that, I had some health issues physical and mental health issues in the mid-90s, and uh, I, I got through that, and it helped me immensely. And you've been open about that. Yeah. I mean, you've, you've talked openly about that because you think it, it helps others who may be going through similar challenges. It's human. I mean, so many people who have problems, physical and mental, you know, in the old days, you say, well, you're crazy. I'm not crazy. I'm crazy if I don't get help. You know, and uh, I had no feeling during that time. And maybe the greatest man I've ever known who was a president here helped me during that time, Keith Brody. 
you know, one of the top psychiatrists in the world, and he worked with me for uh, three, four months. And thank goodness you know, I was around good people again. Krzyzewski spent more than four decades here at Cameron Indoor Stadium. The court is even named after him. So this, we I walked mean, out on the floor he spent so much time on. What does this place mean to you? Well, once we started going, every home game when I walked out here, I knew our crowd would be ready. It was a rush. Krzyzewski thinks the pressure got to his team in his last home game here, a loss to arch rival North Carolina. This is the youngest team I've ever coached this year. They were terrific. They were one of my closest teams. I thought everything got really big for them, and Carolina's good. Coach K is stepping off the court at a time of flux for college athletics. What do you think the state of college basketball is right now? It's in chaos, really. College sports, because of the NCAA not evolving and not adapting over the years to where now it, it uh, the old way of doing it and being structured, it hasn't worked. It's a business. And things like the NIL have opened that up. And the NCAA is not equipped to handle it. It's got to restructure and figure out how you put liked people, liked institutions in certain places to govern themselves and maybe come under one total umbrella concerning certain rules. It's got to be something like that. NIL, names, images, likenesses, uh, it has begun to change. Judy, it is the horses have, what, have left the barn or whatever those things are. It's a, it's a whole new world. You have the argument uh, on the one hand, it's time for these players who are a big reason for their teams right. doing so well to reap some rewards from that. But then you have the other argument that it's turning college athletics into a professional league. Well, it's because it hasn't been something that's evolved. In the early 1990s, our guys, our players could go out in the summer and speak and make money at camps and whatever. Uh, really, it was name, image, and likeness. And the NCAA put the kibosh on that. That was it. Imagine if in 1993 they did not do that and the iterations that would have occurred in adapting where would we would be at today. You would learn how to control that and how to govern that. When it all hits you like a tsunami, it doesn't work. It's not going to work. In addition to that, you have the whole transfer portal issue, uh, the, the idea that now players can transfer to another school right. the way Without other sitting students out. do, and immediately play a right. sport. What does that mean for college basketball? Well, it's, it's chaotic. Uh, and they're, basically, we don't have any leadership right now, and we haven't had it for a long time. The lack of leadership and adapting over decades has caught up to us. It knocked down the door and said, you know what? You all are really behind. It's time to build a new house. Can you be part of figuring that out? I'm more than happy to talk to somebody about, but I, that's not what I'm gonna spend the rest of my life doing. I, that, it'd be like me beating my head against the wall here. I'd like to know who's leading before I do anything. It's been very frustrating for me and for a number of coaches over the years to give up so much time uh, in ad hoc meetings and whatever to try to, to try to influence change because it went nowhere. And so I don't want to be involved anymore in anything where it's not going someplace. I, I want my bus to go someplace. Players now, if they are stars, as freshmen can earn a lot of money. Are you comfortable with that? It's the way it is. It's not going to change. We have to make it make that work well. I, I'm asking partly because some people look at what's going on in college basketball. They say there's just too much money. People looked at your salary. They learned last year you earned $12 million a year right. before this. Um, That's not right, though, because it compiles a couple of years. Do you realize how much we raise for the school besides making money and every capital campaign 
you know, when it's a three, two billion dollar campaign, sports is a big part of the marketing structure to make that happen. So yeah, we make money, but we make money for everybody. One other big area I want to raise is international sports. You've coached the Olympic team, teams of countries that played against other countries. Does it matter if you're playing against a team like Russia right now after it's gone into Ukraine? Right. Well, you know, when there's been a world war, there are no Olympics. There's, there's no competition or whatever. Personally, I wouldn't do anything with them, but that's at the, the next room where it happens, not in my room. Over the course of his career, Krzyzewski has never shied away from voicing his opinions. In 2020, when the murder of George Floyd rocked the nation, he released a video statement after a series of conversations with his current and former players. Black Lives Matter. We should be saying it every day. It's not political. This is not a political statement. It's a human rights statement. Do you think college sports have done as much as it could have to address systemic racism? We all agree there's systemic yeah. racism. No, I think it's done a really good job, and especially in providing opportunities. Uh, you know, uh, sport has given people who, youngsters who did not have the economic ability to go to a college, to go to college in so many sports, and Title IX for women and helping in that regard. And how do you think we're doing in the rest of the country when it comes to No, we're not doing race. well. I mean, why does one part of Congress sit on this side and the other sit on that side? And yeah, my thing is two is better than one if two can act as one. Damn it, it be would be a hell of a lot better country if two can act as one in every regard, and that's not the case, and both are at fault. And yet a major hang-up right now is over one issue, and that's whether the 2020 presidential election was fairly decided or not. Well, that's crazy. One group of people. Yeah, well, that, to me, that's nuts. Look, the other thing is everyone in our country should have the ability to vote in the easiest possible manner. And yet there are active efforts right now to, to make it harder. Crazy. I think that's nuts. Every corner of Krzyzewski's office is a living monument to a man who has achieved success through regimen and structure. That's the price you have to pay, the preparation. The night before practice, I would write out a practice plan. So in 47 years in U.S., I probably have written 5,000 practice plans. Now, for the first time in nearly half a century, his entire routine will change. So as you sit back and or sit forward uh, at this stage of your life and your career, what do you take with you right now? For my whole career, I was a car that never had a rearview mirror. Don't hit him here. Once I did something, it was done. I call it next play all the time. No regrets, gave it my best. Is that going to bother you? They beat you or you won. You know what? It doesn't make any difference. I'm on to the next thing. Now, I have reflected some, but not so much about games. For me, it's been very emotional, but very gratifying in not remembering that we won a national championship or we lost our last game or whatever. But what really matters is, is people. And we've had a tremendous impact on people during the five, almost five decades we've coached. Still no regrets? I have no regrets. I mean, send out so many autographs. And for youngsters, there are two things that I write a lot. Uh, one is always try your best. And to me, you're a winner if you always try your best. And another thing is follow your heart in the pursuit of your dreams. I've done both of them, and uh, I've been a lucky guy. Mike Krzyzewski, a lucky guy. Thank you very much. You're welcome. It's my pleasure. And we were glad to have that conversation, and he says he is taking his time to figure out what he's going to do next.